what's up guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to another vlog i don't know if it's because it's virgo season or because i am a virgo but i have more motivation than usual to clean and declutter and organize pretty much everything i own and i realized that something i've never organized before are all of my books also because it's been almost like three years since i started collecting books and buying books and all that type of stuff and i haven't gone through any of them i've just been adding to my piles i just want to put all of my series together all the genres also before i start just because i've gotten a lot of questions on my little bookshelf which it is a bookshelf i know it looks like it's just one big pile of books even though it might not look it this is a very sturdy bookshelf it's literally never fallen i did get this bookshelf from amazon i got it like almost three years ago and i feel like usually the exact same one that i got is sold out but there's a bunch of similar ones on amazon and i'm gonna try to link a couple more in my amazon storefront but anyways the first thing i'm gonna do is put every single book that i have on my bed and then i'm gonna separate them and put them into categories so we're just gonna go through my entire book collection together let's do it I honestly knew that I had a lot of books, but I did not expect to have this many. I also put them all on my bed so I wouldn't quit because now if I don't put it away, I don't have a bed to sleep on tonight. Now I'm gonna categorize them and then put them back. This is just a little overwhelming, but let's do it. Okay, these are the piles that I have going on, and these are the ones that I still have to find a place for. Colleen Hoover pile, romance pile, my Lauren Lane pile. I wanna keep books by the same author together, so these two will go there for now. This book right here, Nicholas Sparks See Me, was the first book I ever bought on Amazon, and this book was definitely what restarted my love for reading, so I'm definitely keeping this one. Colleen Hoover, romance. I'm gonna put this one in the thriller pile. That pile's too big. Starting a new thriller pile. Okay, so I figured that in order to not absolutely lose my mind, I'm gonna start putting some of the books on my shelf, starting with the first series. This is the Twisted series. I have Twisted Love, Twisted Games, Twisted Hate, and Twisted Lies. Next series is the Lucy Score Knockmout series. I have Things We Never Got Over, Things We Hide From The Light, and I just got this one yesterday. This is Things We Left Behind. I haven't even read it yet, but I'm so excited for it. The next books aren't a series, but they're all of my Emily Henry books. So in order to have all of my Lucy Score books together, I put By A Thread right there. And then to keep going with the pastels and the pink colors, I put both of my Carly Fortune books, Every Summer After and Mimi By The Lake. And then I put both of my Elisa Sussman books, which is Funny You Should Ask and Once More With Feeling. Next, I have both of my Elena Armas books. With that, I'm also going to put all three of my Lauren Lane books, Made in Manhattan, Passion on Park Avenue, and To Serve With Love. And just to fill in that little gap, I'm going to put this book, which is Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. The next series is a Dreamland Billionaire series. I have the fine print, terms and conditions, and the final offer. In this little gap, I'm gonna put both of my Sally Rooney books. In this shelf, I put all of my Allie Hazelwood books together and all of my Sarah Adams books. In the next shelf, I'm gonna put all of my Taylor Jenkins Reid books because I have a lot of hers. Malibu Rising and Carrie Soto is back. After I Do, Maybe in Another Life, and One True Loves. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones in the Six. This is looking very organized. I'm obsessed so far. I put the Kings of Sin series right here. First book, which is King of Wrath, and the second one, which is King of Pride. At the very bottom, I'm gonna put all of my dark romance books because I have three different series in that genre. The first one is the Maid series. You guys know, or if you don't know, I love this series so, so freaking much. I read this like two years ago, still not over it. This is The Sweetest Oblivion, Maddest Obsession, my personal favorite, and The Darkest Temptation. And then I have four more books from another series. This is the Bound series, which wasn't as good as the Maid series in my opinion, but obviously it was a little good because I bought four books. And then a current series that I'm reading is the Never After series. I read Hooked and I recently read Scarred. And then lastly, I have this one right here, the Mindfuck series. This whole entire book is actually five books in one. So this is the whole Mindfuck series together. This is what my bed is looking like. These right here are all of my Colleen Hoover books. And then this little situation 
are all of my rom-coms and romance books. This is another romance. This I'm pretty sure is the only fantasy book that I own. I was like ready to make a whole pile for my fantasy books. This is the only one I have. <laughs> and then this pile and this pile are all of my book of the month books. This pile right here is all of my TBR. And this pile are all of my thriller books. Starting with, this was the first thriller book I ever read and it was also one of the very first book talk books I ever read. We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. And back then, I mean, I read this like almost three years ago and I really, really enjoyed it. But I'm not sure if I read this now that I would like it just as much. But back then, I loved it. Then I have Mexican Gothic, which I actually never finished. I'm actually gonna put this in my TBR pile because I know it's a really good thriller book, but I never finished it. I started it. Never finished it though. Then I have The Silent Patient, which I loved. The Wife Between Us, You Are Not Alone. The Woman in the Window, Rock, Paper, Scissors, so freaking good. The Perfect Marriage, The Maid, The Housemaid. This is another one that I haven't read, so it's gonna go in my TBR. This is called The Hacienda. Just by the cover, I feel like I'm gonna love it. Then I have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is Killers of a Certain Age. The Paris Apartment, A Flicker in the Dark. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna read this one either this month or next month. And then I have The Last Party. For rom-coms, I have Dating Dr. Dill, The X Talk, Punk 57. This brings me back to like two, three years ago when I first discovered Book Talk. This was like all the rage. Then I have The Hating Game, You Deserve Each Other, Birds of California, Bully. I hate the whole bully trope, but this book was honestly really good. Then I have It Happened One Summer, The Kiss Quotient. This book I actually found at a thrift store. It's called Don't You Forget About Me. And I honestly thought it was like the cutest story ever. Then I have The Unhoneymooners, another OG. I feel like this book was carrying book talk at some point in time. Then I have Meet Me Under the Mistletoe, Wedding Day. Love this book so much. Shipped, cutesy little read, From the Jump. This is one I finished not that long ago. And then The Roughest Draft. This was a really good slow burn. Then I have my romance pile. I feel like this could be considered a rom-com, but I put it in this pile. This is The Deal by L. Kennedy. This is a series, but I only read this first book. Song of Achilles. This is Before We Were Strangers. A masterpiece. I'm obsessed with this story, with this book, everything about it. Love and Other Words, still one of my favorite books to this day. Park Avenue Summer. This actually isn't a romance. I don't know why I put it here. This is a historical fiction story, but it's also incredibly good. This is my Magnolia Parks book, See Me by Nicholas Sparks. These were also a huge reason why I got into reading. This is The Duke and I and The Viscount Who Loved Me. I feel like this book started my obsession with the trope Enemies to Lovers because it was done so freaking well. Then I have Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez and Part of Your World. Yours Truly is literally one of my favorite books from this entire year. It was so good. It is a lot later now. I'm freshly showered. I'm clean. I am feeling so good right now. Today, which is Monday, was one of those Mondays and one of those days where everything that could possibly go wrong, like everything that I was doing, everything that could go wrong with each thing that I was doing was going wrong. I basically had one of those types of days today, but now that it's like the end of the day, I'm showered, I'm clean, I'm in my comfy bed, I'm about to read my book. I'm honestly feeling super good. Also get uh, one of the Malibu bagels. Okay guys, it's the next day. I just picked up a little bagel. I just know this is gonna be so good. And then I picked up a little matcha. That is so good. It's a really, really nice day today. So I figured I'd spend part of my day reading at the beach. But I also remember that there's a little free library in Malibu. And yesterday when I was like cleaning out, organizing my bookshelves, there were a couple books that I know I'm not gonna wanna read again that I kind of wanted to donate. So I brought two of them with me. This one's the Fantasy League and this one's the Red Zone. They're part of a series, so I thought I would donate them together. Okay. 
Okay, I didn't get any books. I did notice that the one that I donated here like a month or two ago is gone, which is so exciting. I don't even remember which was the one. I think it was Summer Sisters, which is so fun. Like, I wonder where it is. I'm gonna be starting this book today, Things We Left Behind. I'm actually in the middle of reading The Nanny. I'm really, really enjoying that book, but the reason I wanna start this one is because one, I keep hearing that this book is super, super good. Another reason I feel like I have to take a break from The Nanny is because this past weekend I finished The Housemaid, but the day after I finished The Housemaid, I started The Nanny, and I didn't realize how similar those plots are. The main girls in both books are like struggling for money, so they both take up a job as a nanny. They're also living in the house of their employer. However, the issue is that in The Housemaid, it's a thriller so everything that's happening is like incredibly creepy you just get all of these like creepy suspenseful vibes from the housemaid and the nanny is supposed to be like this cutesy little rom-com everything that's happening in the nanny that is supposed to be like super super cute or romantic I just feel like it's creepy and it's scary because my mind is still thinking I'm reading the housemaid so I'm taking a break from that book and I'm gonna read this one instead things we left behind also something that i wanted to do in this video that i feel like i haven't done in a really long time is a monthly reading wrap-up i feel like over the past month and a half i have been reading a lot of books and most of them are really really good and i want to recommend them to you guys or at least tell you what they're about so i made a little list of some of the books that i've finished recently okay starting with once more with feeling apart from just being a really cute story i really really enjoyed that book and i thought it was incredibly interesting because both of the main characters are obsessed with musicals and i guess a big part of the book is them making a musical together. So the references and just everything like that was really interesting to read. Basically, Once More With Feeling is a second chance romance. Even though I feel like the story wasn't really life-changing, it was really, really enjoyable to read. So I'd probably give that book four stars out of five. Next, I read a rom-com called From the Jump. This one wasn't one of my favorites. It didn't really stick out to me at all. It was kind of like a cute story, but I feel like there were more parts to it that I didn't like than parts that I did like. So From the Jump was probably like a three stars out of five. Then. We have one of my, I think, favorite books from this year. I honestly really, 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 really love this book, and that is Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. It was just such an enjoyable story, and it like surprisingly had a lot of depth to it. I just enjoyed it. I just loved it so freaking much. This book was an enemies to lovers done so incredibly right, and it was also a slow burn. If you've been a fan of Ali Hazelwood in the past, or maybe you've never even read the other two books, you absolutely have to read this one. So that book, I'm gonna give it five stars, I think. I like, it feels wrong to give a rom-com five stars because I feel like most of the time they're not that memorable like they're really really good and enjoyable to read but you know like a week later you're gonna forget about it but this one was really really good so I'm gonna give it five stars next book I read was King of Pride this one is the second book in the Kings of Sin series I absolutely adored King of Wrath and King of Pride did not disappoint I really 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 like that book too and like I feel like I've said so many times before I adore Anna Huang if she has one fan it's me like these billionaire romances that she creates are impeccable okay next book i read and another incredibly good good story was scarred that is another book in a series that's from the never after series i read this book in one night i opened the book up i expected to read a chapter maybe two could not put it down i literally fell asleep at like two or three in the morning that night because i just had to see this story through and the thing that this book had that made it absolutely impossible to put down is that it was a slow burn so with every chapter with every page you're like waiting for this couple to get together also it was really really interesting to read because it's a dark romance but it's also like a royalty sort of story but it was about this girl that was seeking revenge for her dad so in order to get revenge on the king she and her uncle make up this plan for her to marry the king and then when she's married and when she's queen she will get her revenge what she doesn't take into consideration is the fact that she's going to fall in love with the brother and the brother of the king is like a total troublemaker he's kind of like the black sheep of the entire sort of like royal family but yeah if you guys enjoy dark romance or like fantasy sort of love stories i feel like you would really really love scarred the next one is practice makes perfect for most of practice makes perfect i feel like i was really really invested but there were some parts of the book that were just not for me i just think i had a better reading experience with when in rome than i did with practice makes perfect but i'd probably still give that one four stars out of five because there were some parts that i really really loved but i just couldn't get over the parts that i didn't love okay and now onto the last book that I finished recently, which was The Housemaid. I also don't even remember the last thriller book that I read, but this book just reminded me why I love thriller books so much. The way that the reader gets left at a cliffhanger at every single chapter made that book impossible to put down. It was so incredibly good. I'm so ready and excited to read more from this author. Basically, the story starts out with our main character named Millie. She's going through a tough situation when the book starts, and that is the fact that she can't find a job. She's really, really desperate for a job. She's living in her car, so she's like really 
desperate for money and that is when she interviews with this really really wealthy lady she's gonna be cleaning the house looking after the little daughter and also living in the house with them i feel like the thing about thriller books that is absolutely crucial to have like the best reading experience is that you shouldn't know that much about it because going into the story completely blind makes it so much better just know it's about this girl really desperate for a job she's gonna find a job with these really really rich people who end up being not who she thought they were plot twists coming at you from every direction if you guys are looking for a good thriller book to read during september october like during the cozy fall season you absolutely positively have to read the housemaid i'm not even kidding it's so good but yeah that is pretty much my little august wrap up and a little bit of september